form. In the 20th century, as we know, socialism came to be, came to be not the, the norm, but one of the major forces that were, uh, was fighting for control over the societies of the Western world. And the socialist view of politics is very different from the view that we conservatives have, uh, and certainly very view different from the view that um, Janet rightly attributed to Edmund Burke. Uh, the conservative view is that, uh, that politics exists in order to maintain peace uh, and the rule of law uh, and permit civil society to develop and to grow and to flourish according to its own natural logic. Civil society is the end. Politics is just the means to ensure that it doesn't grow out of control, to keep boundaries, in other words. For the socialist, the purpose, uh, politics has a purpose uh, and a goal of its own. It's not there to permit the development of individual uh, goals through the uh, civil association and the little platoons and so on. It's there to remake society according to a new model. The new model is one in which it, the equality of, uh, of all will be the, the ruling principle uh, and the liberation of, the, uh, of previously oppressed minorities uh, will be one of the means to achieve this. The state has, in other words, a, a vision of the end point to which it is directing uh, everything and law has to answer to that vision. So it, it has the right to override uh, the individual sovereignty in the, in the process of producing this new society. That, that vision, interestingly enough, is already there in the 1945 Declaration, Universal Declaration of Human Rights that was um, brought into being by Eleanor Roosevelt and is the founding document of the United Nations. It begins with a statement of rights, which is very uh, close to the uh, um, English-speaking tradition, that you know, rights, our basic human rights include the freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, freedom of association, the right to pursue happiness in our own way, and so on. In other words, it reaffirms the sovereignty of the individual. But by, uh, I think it's um, number 26 already, you know, that it's got that far suggests that something's gone wrong. Uh, um, but by, by number 26, we are, it's talking of a right to health, uh, a, a right to a rewarding life, a, a right to develop uh, um, in, in, the, in the way that, uh, that um, human beings nat naturally develop and so on. All kinds of rights are being specified which can't necessarily be achieved by an individual working alone. Uh, they are rights which require uh, the, the, uh, the state to, to enter on the individual's behalf and re divert resources in his direction. Uh, and, um, and we've seen this, uh, the, these new rights, which are essentially claims against the public uh, purse to, uh, uh, we've seen them grow in recent years uh, under the impulse, uh, under the influence of things like the Human Rights Commission here uh, and uh, the, uh, the working of the courts, in particular at the European Courts of Human Rights in, in Europe. Uh, and there have been two particular uh, uh, ways in which this um, development has, has um, advanced rapidly in recent years. One is the, through the idea of non-discrimination. Uh, the right to non-discrimination is something which um, is not there, of course, in, in the uh, traditional Bill of Rights or in the American uh, Declaration of Independence or Constitution, but it is... Um, something which the, is recognized by the European Court of Human Rights and has therefore been written into our legislation under the Human Rights Act in, in Britain. It means that to, uh, in any privilege that's, that's um, granted or any contract of employment, uh, it becomes actually a criminal offense to discriminate uh, on grounds of, and then it, it's an open-ended list in, of race, sex, ethnic, identity, religion, uh, um, sexual orientation, uh, uh, dot, dot, dot. Uh, uh, and the courts, of course, constantly find new ways uh, of affirming that uh, somebody has been discriminated against. So far, nobody has been able to 
prove that um, non-discrimination clauses protect conservatives. Yeah, um, uh, but we are, in fact, the only group that is regularly discriminated against. Everybody else ha has the privileges of this law. And I think the result, of course, is a, 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 a massive intrusion into the in sovereignty of the individual on behalf of the creation of a, of a new kind of socialist uh, uh, order. But um, th there's a, another uh, way in which the, the idea of human rights is being expanded beyond the uh, idea of beyond the realm of individual sovereignty, and that's through what, what I, I would call the offense machine. You know, uh, we've, we all know that freedom of speech uh, means that uh, people say things which are quite offensive. Uh, and we've had examples of this. Obviously, um, people make racist remarks and sexist remarks and so on. Um, uh, and uh, this could be part of the ordinary banter of, uh, of um, friendly conversation. But, or, but there's always a, bar a, a line over which it shouldn't step. Uh, and um, uh, then, of course, when people overstep that line, have they committed a crime or not? Uh, and uh, modern courts and, and modern commentators uh, are increasingly worried about this because, uh, of course, in an egalitarian society, you don't actually know whether you have been insulted or not. Um, you know, uh, just to point out that you're an ordinary example of the human species is, to me, an insult, but I keep quiet about it. Uh, but anything that can be said can be taken as an insult. Who is to, do, who is to determine who is, who is insulting whom? And when should that be a crime, if at all? Obviously, the common law has dealt with this over centuries. Uh, in sedition has always been a crime, uh, a common law crime. Um, and so is incitement to violence. Uh, and uh, John Stuart Mill, in his famous book on liberty, uh, makes a clear exception for those sort of things, uh, saying uh, something which is actually intended to incite people to, uh, to murder or whatever uh, has always been a crime in English law. But uh, things that you say can have bad consequences, even if you don't intend them. Uh, you know, uh, I can say, I wonder whether uh, Muhammad was really inspired or really um, given words directly from the Almighty, uh, and that might proceed, uh, produce a riot, uh, regardless of my intention simply to open uh, uh, an interesting topic of discussion. But it's not my fault. Uh, and yet, uh, of course, as we know, uh, there's an extraordinary ability of people to take offense when it suits them. Uh, and, um, uh, and to indicate that, that, that this offence has occurred, even before they fully felt it. <clears throat> Being offended is a dramatic uh, capacity of human beings. It's a histrionic ability. That has to say that you, 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 if you begin by pretending you're offended, then you see you've got the response, then you feel you are really offended. And eventually, you're, you're wor you've worked yourself up into a state of anger which you cannot yourself control. Um, that's your problem, of course. But uh, uh, in the modern world, um, the well-meaning liberals w w wish to make it the, the problem of the person who, who first started this process going. So we have a lot of uh, uh, people coming to courts, especially in America, saying that, that they felt offended or insulted as a woman, as a gay, as a Muslim, and so on, uh, by this or that pronouncement, uh, and that the person concerned should be either um, uh, uh, forced to pay a fine or, or in some way criminalized. And that, I think, is one of the, thing, uh, the uh, issues which is becoming more and more serious, because although it may not lead to uh, legislative uh, uh, pronouncements like your Section 18C, it is still there, active in the imagination of the courts and active in the imagination of the journalists who report on things, and also active in the uh, imagination and the fears of ordinary people. People begin to censor, censor themselves. Self-censorship is now a very important feature of our public discourse in the West, uh, in, not only in, um, in newspapers, but also, of course, in universities and so on. And um, 
This is amplified, uh, uh, again, from the left by the invention of a most extraordinary concept, the concept of the phobia. 